What's up, Chicago? This is your man, Mace Jackson. You are listening to the WVOM Morning Show. I am your host, and listening in the background, you hear it, you know it. It's the man, it's the Snoop, D-O-double-G in the building. Snoop, what's up, man? It's the one and only D-O-double-G. Man, so you know what? Check this out, man. You know, as we, uh, you are in town. Now, what, tell me what brings you to Chicago. First of all, I just love being in Chicago to begin with. The Windy City is always good to me. Uh, but mainly why I'm here is because I have a birthday coming up October 20th, and I'm celebrating with y'all at the Ari Crown Theater doing two shows of my new stage play, Redemption of a Dog. Yeah, October 20th at the Ari Crown Theater starring Snoop Dogg, Tamar Braxton, Omar Gooden, Demetria McKinney. Now, mm. the Redemption of a Dog, talk to me about Redemption of the Dog. Is it a, is it a personal story? Is it, is it, does it, is there any, any personal, anything personal about it to you? Oh, it's very personal. It's the redemption of a dog and I play Snoop. <laughs> play. All right. And don't get no personal than that. I mean, I'm playing me. So, you know what, as you talk about that, so as I think about that, man, I'm, uh, you know, as we've, I'm, I'm 47 years old, I'm in my second marriage, right? right, right. And I think about trying to come up. And as I was trying to come up, some of the moves that I made probably did not help me stay married in my first relationship. Right. Talk to me about how a brother like yourself that blew up the way that you did was able to maintain, build, and transcend and keep a relationship. Well, that's great that you asked that question because when you come see Redemption of a Dog, you'll see exactly how it all went down, how it all folded, how it went to play. The understanding, the misunderstanding, the miscommunication, the communication. You see it all. And Demetria McKinney plays my wife. Tamar Braxton plays my angel. So it's like you get to understand the dynamics of what I went through to become Snoop Dogg and to maintain and the, the things that we chase after, which is girls, fame, success, money. And then you realize what's most important, love, Life and God. Now, make the distinction. You said between your woman and your angel? No, 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 no. What did you say? I said Demetria McKinney mm -hmm. is playing my wife. Your wife. And Tamar Braxton is playing my angel. Now, what's the difference between your wife and your angel? An angel was from up, up, up above. Okay. The angel was heaven sent. So what I mean by angel, I don't mean like a so that's physical. Not, I mean like okay. a spiritual angel. So she plays an angel from heaven, not like a physical angel that I touch and feel but it's a spiritual thing. This play is different, man. It's like when I say she plays this character, she's an angel from heaven, for real, like a real angel. Now, now Snoop, you, you're talking about spiritual, right? And so as I think about spiritual, Snoop, you released a gospel album, brother, a gospel album. Talk to me about this gospel album. How does Snoop Dogg release, release a gospel album? Go in the studio, make some records, and put it out just like that, just like I put a gangster record out. It's all about expression, you know. Music is a platform to express yourself. And for many years, I've been keeping it gangster. And I wanted to give it up for God on one record. Can I do that? Can I take my time and thank God for all he's done for me and make a record that my grandmother and my mother can be proud of, that they can play for their friends and not have to find a radio version of me or a clean version, but just play the whole thing from top to bottom? It can rock at family reunions. It can rock at get-togethers. It can rock at... Anything that's about life, this ain't funeral music. This is life music. And a lot of times I made music that leads you to a funeral. This leads you to heaven. So, Snoop, talk to me about that. You know, talk about the transition of being spiritual. Like, how do you balance being spiritual and that gangster lifestyle that you talked about? Well, if you, if you know anything about the Bible, Jesus was as gangster as it gets. He was in the streets doing his ministry. So you got to mix it up with those. That's when your ministry becomes what it is. You got to go out there and speak the language to the people who don't understand it. And then you got to be able to speak their language to bring them to the truth. So I don't look at what I'm doing like as if I was a preacher or this and that. I'm just bringing truth like I've always done. It just so happens that I made a record that's gospel driven, that's faith based, that has a bunch of gospel greats on it. And the message is different than the message that I've normally given you. But it's the same person. It's not like Snoop Dogg became some preacher. I'm still Snoop Dogg. I just made a gospel album because I felt like this was a piece of me.
that I needed to release musically because I could do that because I was raised in church. I was brought up off great gospel music. I know it. I understand it. So it's not me playing with it. It's me playing with it. Now check this out. So I got a question. So Snoop, I, I got the album. I listened to it. But I'm going to tell you, I have a Pavlovian response to Snoop Dogg music. Brother, when I hear your music, I feel like I, and my audience might not want to hear this. My friend of mine feels like every time he hears a Snoop record, he just feels like he wants to grab something, roll something up. Can I roll up, smoke, and listen to the to the gospel album at the same time? You can do what you like. Who to tell you that you can't? All right. Who can, who can judge you? If your spirit is right, you can do what you want to do. The Bible tell you to have a sip of wine and this and that, but that do more damage to you than anything. I see people in car accidents, fights, domestic disputes, but when they hit that, do it, Floyd, <laughs> you're going to relax, lay back, get you something to eat, and you're going to make it to see them all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, WVON family, we are talking to the one and only Snoop D O Double G. Now, let me tell you what, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't. it's very rare that we get to talk to a hip hop legend such as yourself. And I. you know what? I was. Going back in time, and I want to go back, back, back in time. I want to go back just a little bit before Doggy Style mm -hmm. to Deep Cover. Right. And hearing Deep Cover, and then the chronic, and then the anticipation of Doggy Style. Brother, Doggy Style, I believe... In connection, in, in conjunction with the chronic, but doggy style solidified, in my estimation, that the West Coast was back. Talk to me about what it was like and what it was like to take the West Coast and put it on your shoulders and still be a hip hop and still be recognized across the country as a hip hop guy. Well, I was a fan of real hip hop in the beginning. Now, what's real hip hop to you? Boogie Down Productions, LL Cool J, uh, MC Shan, Biz Markie, Big Daddy Kane, MC Light, Salt and Pepper, uh, Heavy D, Ice T, NWA, Public Enemy, Slick Rick, Dana Day. That's real hip hop. Cause not two rappers that I name sound alike, look alike, or feel alike. That's real hip hop. Man, and so how then? With all of that, did you come to develop your style? Uh, I come from an era of gladiator school where you had to be great. I battled a thousand MCs before I met Dr. Dre. So I had been to school for it. I was like a karate student that was trying to get his black belt before I met my teacher. So when I was able to meet Dr. Dre, he introduced me to my sensei, the DOC. And the DOC was one who showed me how to take all of these freestyles and these dope ass rhymes that I had and condense them into songs and hooks and make them chants and make them what they are now. So the will to want to be great, the will to want to be him, whoever was number one, whether it was Rock Him, Ice Cube, LL, whoever was number one, I wanted him. I wanted him bad. And I wanted him in a way to where, like, not to go get him, but to go get him to where they recognize that I'm coming. And that's what it was all about. I was that dog, like, nigga, I'm the dog, I'm coming. Y'all gonna know about the dog. And every time I seen a rapper that, that I love, remember the first time I seen EPMD, I ran up to him. Man, I'm a big fan, man, my name is Snoop Dogg. I just wanna let y'all know I love y'all music. And they was like, we know who you is. I was <laughs> like, all right, cool. That, that's one radar check. Then I ran up on, uh, who was it? I think it was Slick Rick. Mm. And he was like, I love your style. Your style is so similar to mine. I said, man, you the <laughs> motherfucker I want to be. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm the type of person that when I first got in the game, if I seen you, I run up to you and tell you how great you was. And how you dope and I love you. And man, I'm a fan. Like, so it was never no. It wasn't a Ill. beef? It, no. Because see, it seemed like, man, you Snoop Dogg, it seems like the way people, the path to success right now is it's rap beef. beef. Like I got to I got to hate on you. That wasn't to take my that wasn't down. my approach. My approach was I love you. Cause you dope and you doing something that I can't do. I wish I would have made that song. Let me tell you how dope you are. How you think me and Tupac became friends? Me and Biggie became friends. I became friends with every rapper in the game because 
I stepped to them. Tupac probably was the only one that we stepped to each other. Like, we met at a, at a, a rap party on some battle and shit. Like, Ricky Harris was hosting, and uh, somebody was DJing. And Michael Rappaport just reminded me of this shit because I didn't even remember it happening. <laughs> Put a beat on. So Tupac started rapping. And then Ricky Harris grabbed a mic. I was like, my homeboy from Long Beach in the house. And he gave me the mic. And I started rapping. And it just, it just sounded like we was at each other because the raps he was saying was gangster and hard. And, and I was saying gangster raps that was hard. It's like here. And then we ended up going outside smoking a blunt and doing this. It seemed like that's always the way. You can always bring peace with a blunt. <laughs> but you know what? So <laughs> it seemed like, you know what? Every time I, let me, let me, my friend tell me, my friend, because yeah, you, know, you know, my kids listen. Yeah, so, hey, this yeah. is a WVOM. I know your friend. <laughs> you know my friend? Yeah. I know my friend too. It's the WVOM Morning Show. <laughs> I am your host, Maze Jackson. That Wake voice your ass up. <laughs> that you hear in the background is the one and only Snoop, Snoop D O W G Hello. in the building. Now, Snoop. Hey man, I'm gonna just say, how talk to me about longevity in the game? Cause you know what, there are very few rappers, and and I, I can't I can't even call you a rapper no more. Right. I don't even know what to call you. Thank I mean, you. brother, you are here Thank you. for this play, Thank right? You. So I gotta give you the actor, right? right? Can I tell you my favorite role, talk to baby me. boy? Baby boy, man, nigga, man. fuck you, man, nigga. You don't fuck about your fort, nigga. I ain't your daddy no way, nigga. I would tell you that was classic. But Snoop, you, you, you doing everything, my brother. You, you act, you rap. Man, you did a family show. You got a football team. They even tell me you got a cookbook, my dog. Yeah. Now I know that cookbook got to be off man, the chain. Guess what the book is called? What's it called? From crook to cook. From crook. Okay. Talk to me about the recipes in the book. Man, please. I got some hella recipes, and I got 10 bomb recipes. Let me tell you. I'm going to take you here and here real quick. I got a fried bologna sandwich on there. <laughs> a fried bologna sandwich? I got lobster thermidor. What? Okay. I got filet mignon. <laughs> mm. I even got some potato chip fried chicken wings with your favorite tater chips chip sprinkled on them. Sprinkled or rolled in them? I can't tell you the secret. Oh, but so you bite into them. You <laughs> <laughs> now where I'm gonna get? The, where, now where do I get the book? The book is available, man. It's at Barnes and Nobles. It's everywhere, man. The book is out, man. From crook to cook, and the forward is done by Martha Stewart. She did the forward, so it's official, like a referee. Now, now I gotta ask you, man, because you said Martha Stewart, man. Now Martha Stewart, you, how you click with? So how you click with Martha Stewart, man? I'm the perfect. Dynamic duo, meaning that I could be Batman or Robin. Put me with Dre, I play Batman. Put me with Pharrell, I play Batman. Put me with Wiz, I play Robin. Put me with Martha, I play Batman. I'm, I'm good with whoever you put me with. Okay. It's just a matter of finding the right chemistry and the right mode. Me and her both love to cook. We love to be in front of the camera, and we love to entertain our guests, and we have celebrity friends. Great TV show. And we both funny, and we both witty, and we both on point, and we both are icons. Now let me ask a question. <laughs> you, does Martha uh, partake? Not to say on camera, but I'll talk to you later about it. <laughs> she just posted some cookies on her page that had my face on it. <laughs> ah, and some it had cookies. chronic leaves in the eyes. So now, Snoop, I got to ask, because we're in Chicago, man, and my, my audience wants to know. It's like... No one would think that you and Martha Stewart would click, but some kind of way you did. Right. Man, we in Chicago. Kanye. Mm. Donald Trump. Mm. He, man, so let, let me just say, I rewound the tape. If you take the Superman and the cape out of it, is there a path forward? Is there a way that we can, that Kanye can do like you did with Martha Stewart and, you know, I Batman know. I, Robin. I, I think he don't need to be the one speaking on behalf of us because he don't have his mind right and he don't have the right presentation. And nobody can speak for black people but black people. So that means we don't have a leader. We don't have nobody who speaks for everybody's point of view or opinion. So the only thing he can do is speak on some points that are valid that make people feel like he's speaking for us, which is prison reform and freeing Larry Hoover. Those were two points that 
I felt like Chicago could really support him on. Okay. But that other things that he was talking about just didn't make no sense. And it's like it got lost in the shuffle because it's like you forget about what you're really here for. If you're sitting in front of this man who has the power to make things happen, there should be some people in there that are saying some things that are going to affect him and make him want to make things happen. As you see, right after the interview, Donald Trump went right back to doing his same bullshit the next day and, and being the, the asshole as he was. And it's like that meeting was nothing but a publicity stunt for him to try to get some black voters. And niggas is not voting for you, nigga. I don't give a fuck what you say. <laughs> Kanye ain't the nigga to get us to follow, nigga. He's the wrong nigga. We not following him nowhere. Snoop. I feel Chicago like Chicago niggas ain't even following that nigga. Snoop. So on that note, I was just thinking about this, man. LA There's, niggas go with me anyway. <laughs> I saw out in the hallway, yeah, man. You got some up. big, yeah, some big ride. fellas. They roll with me. I mean, no matter where you're from around the globe, if you're from California, you riding with Snoop Dogg. But Snoop Dogg ain't going to take you down no dark alley. And if Snoop Dogg needs some help, there's going to be somebody strong enough in his family or his friends that's going to snatch him up by the collar and say, nigga, you acting a fool right now. You making us look bad. Sit your ass down and get off that TV till you get you some help and stop talking and start listening. Man, like, that's what it need to be. And you know, forty-seven year old grown man, right. we understand that. We understand the demographics of you got kids. See, his kids is young. Right. My kids is grown. Okay. They see everything I do. They ask me about what I do. When your kids get to that age, you got to start watching your steps. When they babies, you can hide stuff and move it around and put on some Netflix and some cartoons, and they won't really know what's happening. But when they get to the age where they start asking you questions, and you got to be more accountable. Snoop. There's a rolling, what I call a rolling black awakening mm. coming across our country. I see it. I see it with brothers like yourself taking control of the industry, no longer allowing, I mean, really taking ownership roles. Yes, I look sir. at Jay. I look at you all creating. And I'm asking you, brother, what's our next step? You know what I'm saying? Because I saw Kanye go there, et cetera. But who do we have? How do we, from the perspective of a brother, man, because you changed the world. I'm going to tell you, legalism, you need to have a stake in the legalization as this thing happens. What makes you and think they, I don't. I, well, I know you got the strand. I'm going to ask you I about that. I ain't talking about no strand. Uh -oh. I'm talking about stake. Equity. Yeah, I just don't speak. How do we get equity, man? I can't how do we tell get you that equity? On, on air. I can holler at you behind the scenes. But okay. The point of getting equity is having your brand strong enough to where they want to give it to you. If your brand ain't worth nothing, they ain't going to give you no equity. It's mm -hmm. all about your brand. You got to build your brand up to where you demand that. And I how does that in, brand live this long? What has been the secret to Snoop being still relevant? Because he controls his brand. I've never let no other man control my fame. Death Row had all the control. Master P gave me a little control. And then I got in full control. And I learned from the best. Master P was a great businessman. So was Suge Knight. I learned the pros and cons to both of them. So when I was able to create my own business, ownership to own my own shit. Guess what the name of my publishing company is? What is it? My Own Shit Publishing. <laughs> and it's C-H-I-T. Hey, man. So, Snoop, I know I got, they, they telling me no, I no, got. No, you we keep rolling, my nigga. We uh, having a good time. All right, my, my man. My man. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So, Snoop, so now as I think about this, man, I look at a brother like yourself, and I got kids, and you got kids, right. and you have, your kids are now getting to a point, I got a daughter that's going to college. Mm. Hey, man. I, as I was coming up and trying to become Maze Jack, mm -hmm. right, and trying to make a name for myself, sometimes, man, I feel like, I know my kids know I love, they know I loved them and they knew I did a lot of stuff for them. But sometimes I look back and I say, I wish I would have done this or I wish I could have done a better job with this. Right. How does... Snoop, talk to me about being a father. Well, most fathers in the black community, we think if we provide, that's been, I told him to keep going. Most fathers in the black community, if we providing, we think that's great fatherhood or being a great father. But providing is not half the battle when you got to do all the, the maintenance of watching them and teaching them and grooming them and the mama's job. So I was a great provider, but I was a terrible father in the beginning. Man. Because I could just buy shit just, you know, here. Here you go. Happy birthday. Here goes some toys. Here goes some money. Let's go to Disneyland. But it wasn't no time. And then once it got to the point where, like, my wife would be like, your kids want to spend time with you. I'm like, stop lying. Why you want to hear that? They ain't said it. Then I hear them niggas in the background, Daddy, come get us. I'm like, damn, he really said that. So it's like now you got to question your 
what do you do? So my kids was a part of my whole career. I had them a part of everything. Right. I come off from the smoking to the videos to the everything. You niggas are going to be right here to see it all because I want you to understand the game. And I raised them in a game to where they understand the game and they respect the game. My oldest son don't want no parts of it. My young son, he loves it. He's a model. He's a this. He's a that. My daughter, she loves it. She want it. So it was like I raised him in it, spent time with him, not as much as I wish I could have, gave him a lot of money. If I could do it all over again, I wouldn't change it. I would not change it. I would not su- supply love for money because that was the way I was brought up. I was brought up the wrong way, but I eventually got it right. That's what makes my story right, that I was wrong and I got right. I don't want to just be right, 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 right. Then I'm going to be wrong at the end. Was the sacrifice worth it? Way worth it because at the end of the day, I learned so much on how to be a better person. So when I finally was able to get back in front of my wife and my kids, I was better for them as opposed to me not having to sacrifice anything and just living reckless and just not caring. Something had to give. And when I had to make a decision on family or career, now, when was that decision? When, give me, when did you have to make, when does Snoop Dogg have to make a decision between family and career? When Snoop Dogg was on the road for 200 days out of a year, when I was doing shows 200 days out of a year and wasn't looking at what was going on, I was just so concerned with, I got 30 people that's going on tour with me and you got to eat, you got to eat, you got to eat, you got to eat. And every year we go on the road and we do this and I'm not thinking that my anniversary, my kid's birthday, I ain't th- I'm just, just a promoter just setting up dates. It's all this money. We got all these, you finna make $7 million in five months if you go on the road. All right, let's go. But you gonna miss the anniversary, your daughter's birthday, this. And I wasn't even thinking about all that, but then years go by, years go by, and it's like, damn, hold on. I missed that many birthdays? Oh, no, nah, hold on, cuz. Fuck you, you fired, nigga. You ain't even caring about me and my family, nigga. Like, for real. I'm in control of that now. I'm setting up all of my day. I'm my own booking agent now, by the way. You said Uncle Snoop's army. It's, oh, it's Uncle Snoop's not my own shit. No, that's my publishing company. Got it. I'm saying as far as doing shows. Right. I book myself. All right. So man, Snoop, they giving me the they giving me the eye, man. I, I want to keep it. So look, let you me need wrap three more this minutes. Up. You got three more minutes. Don't. <laughs> I take the three. You got no, three minutes. Look, nigga. don't give me five. She giving you me the look. You got 120 seconds, nigga. Go. Right. So look, so Snoop. All right, who are your peers? Who are your peers? Uh, my peers, Jay Z, Nas, Ice Cube, uh, Allen Iverson, uh, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, who is who? Do, when you need to relax, chill, what do you listen to? Cause man, you, you do you sing too? Cause you yeah, bro, I sing a little okay. bit. I listen to um, I'm into her, a new artist named Her. Okay. She she got amazing music. You need to look her up. Her. I think I've seen that. I think She got I a song called Focus. She got a song with Daniel Caesar called The uh, Best Part. She is the whole thing. Snoop, what do you tell people? What, what what if you were talking to the WVON listening audience? We are the black on this is the black voice of Chicago. Say that. What do you say to them? What if they could talk to Snoop Dogg and you could leave with leave them with one thing that they should What's keep What's up, in their my nigga? <laughs> What would you say to me? Nah, Chicago, y'all know I love y'all, man. I love what y'all stand for, whether it's basketball, whether it's players, whether it's rapping, whether it's music, entertainment. Chicago is a stand-up type of city. Y'all breed entertainers. Y'all breed love. Y'all breed life. What I want to say to the next ones coming up, do it different. Don't be like them. Don't be like him. Be yourself. It's only one you. The greats from Chicago, they made it because they was them. That's the only way you're going to be great by doing you. Man, WVON family, that is the one and only Snoop D-O-double-G on the WVON Morning Show. I am your host, Maze Jackson. Sitting there with me is Miss Toy Salter. But y'all, we down here in Chicago. Yes, sir. Snoop Dogg in the building. My man, Snoop, anytime you come. Oh, wait. You play. My one birthday. more time, your birthday. birthday. Man, can I come kick it with you for yeah, your you birthday? Can, Talk dog. to us. It's, Tell it's, us. It's my birthday, and we're doing a play at the Ari Crown Theater, October 20th, and that's 3 p.m., Daytime show for grandma and them because I know granny and auntie and them got things to do late on at night. And then we got the 8 p.m. show. So make sure you show up and show out. I need you to be dressed and impressed. Whoever got the best outfit on, we got a $500 giveaway for the best outfit that night. So please come suited and booty, gooded and looted. 
you know what I'm saying? Snoop, D O Double G on the WBOM morning show. Speak on it. We out of here. Peace. Bye, you bitch, you. Right.